concern for general child welfare has existed since the end of the Second World War. But the face of juvenile justice in Scotland completely changed following the recommendations of the Kilbrandon Committee in 1964. This marked the beginning of an enlightened development in the field of juvenile justice and provided the basis for today's children's hearing system, which is unique to Scotland. Giving the responsibility of making decisions to ordinary people who are interested in children and their welfare is still seen as a way of involving communities themselves in finding solutions to problems occurring in their midst. The children's panel is made up of people from communities across Scotland. People like you can fulfill the important role of a panel member, attending children's hearings and contributing to the decisions on the future of today's youngsters. Although some panel members are unemployed, self-employed or retired, the majority are in employment. Therefore, their participation is made possible by the cooperation of their employers and colleagues. My reason for joining the panel was I've been involved with youth clubs and boys football clubs for, for many years now. And uh, I was approached by a, a panel member with the thought of joining the panel. At that time, I couldn't give commitment to it. And in the last three years, I did find some time. And now, obviously, I joined it years ago because it's probably one of the best things I've ever done. If there's one person who's like been helped by us sitting at the other side of the table, then it's all for the good. I suppose, in a way, I get something that I feel that other than just driving a taxi, I'm doing something that's useful uh, and is contributing something uh, and possibly helping future generations if we can get it, if we can get the children's lives right now, then future generations will be better. I find it very interesting and rewarding. Um, I think that the welfare of the child is paramount at all times. And if I can just add a little bit of spare time and um, improving a child's life, then I'll do that. Just talk to the kids as if you're one of them, you know, and let them know that the panel is there to help them. It's not there to sort of like now do anything against them. You know, it's satisfaction is everything. It's just the feeling inside you get. It's just an incredible experience. The whole thing, the training, the getting to know other people, the hearings, the outcomes. It's just an incredible, rewarding experience. We believe that our staff members develop their existing talents in a different way, in a different environment. Um, and they come back here more confident to use these talents within the working environment. I've completely developed my skills as a person, even like talking one-to-one -one or in group meetings or listening to people. I think that's one of the things I do now that I've never done before I joined the panel. And that's the basis of the panel, is listening to what the children say. It's a children's hearing. I would suggest that companies should do it, put something back into the community in which they operate, and benefit by having more rounded employees. It's not beyond the wit of the organisation to uh, organise things in such a way that we can uh, facilitate this very important task. I've always had an interest in the children's hearing system and I felt, well, maybe I could be part of that. And uh, obviously if I do a hearing, maybe anything I've said might come of use to a child. You know what I mean? I think that's good. It's a feel-good factor. Children's hearings take place in various locations across the country. They're conducted in private and every effort is made to make the environment as informal as possible. The number of people present is restricted to the absolute minimum to make the experience the least intimidating for the child and family and to encourage full and frank discussion. It tells me you should be at school but I'd just rather see my dad than go to school because she doesn't like me see my dad. That's not true. He comes to the house. Like I'd, five minutes or something? Ah, it's okay if he's sober, but you know what he's like when he's been at the pub first? I don't like him being in the house when he's drunk. We had that for years. Children come to hearings because they're in need, have offended or have been offended against. Here we see Gavin, aged 14, who's coming to a hearing for the first time. It's alleged that he has committed some offences. Right. You've been asked to attend a children's hearing, and the reason for that is that in terms of section 5221 of the Children's Scotland Act 1995 that you've committed an offence. And in support of the above statement, it is stated that on the 1st of December last year, while acting along with another boy, 
Gavin McLeod stole a charity tin from within the garden centre, Grass Yard Street, Newtown, this being an offence of theft. Do you agree with that, Gavin? Yeah. Sometimes a hearing may ask a child's parents and their representatives to leave the room so that they may obtain the child's views. When they return, the hearing must tell them the substance of what the child has said in their absence. Throwing stuff about. How did you feel about that? I thought maybe he would hit me one day. Yeah. Did you feel your mum was taking sides? Or, or yeah. Was that at all? Because your mum seemed to say that you, you might be exaggerating things and things weren't as bad as you said. Do you, do you think that's unfair? Mm-hmm. I, I, I would agree with Gavin. I mm -hmm. think I think uh, uh, the, the Gavin's mum did underplay the situation. Mm -hmm. I think I think it has been very very fraught. As Gavin's explanation, uh, and he's only talked about perhaps the more extreme instance. If a supervision requirement is made by the hearing, this decision is reviewed within set timescales by another hearing. A review may also be requested by a child or by the parents. This is Diane's review hearing, held at the request of her mother. Diane is just over a year old. She appeared at her first hearing when she was 12 weeks old. Emergency protection measures had been taken because her mother was unable to care appropriately for her. Diane has since been living with foster carers. She's not at the hearing today, as it was considered not to be in her best interest to be present. Sometimes decisions are not easy to make, and the hearing may call upon specialists to help them. Uh, occasion, one of my visits was to the centre where the access takes place, and, and I saw the, the two together. And yes, they, they interreact well. Um, clearly, a lot of affection um, on, on Sharon's part to, towards a wee baby. Where um, necessary, the I, hearing I may really appoint a safeguarder a to consider and advise on the best interests of the child. Safeguarders and, uh, are required to make written reports to the hearings that have appointed January. them. Safeguarders um, have the right to be that, present at hearings until a decision is made and can appeal the decision on behalf of the child. The, the child would not go to um, uh, another placement unless we had free for adoption. Um, from the court and I think what I'd be seeing quite clearly is uh, uh, the review situation we are doing the parallel planning and um, if we were to work over the next 12 weeks then that would give us um, a 12-week window um, where Sharon really has the onus on her to work to work with us to, to prove that she is she has the capabilities of looking after Diane um, and um, at, at that point it would be um, either coming back here and asking um, for your advice about freeing for adoption or looking towards um, Diane returning home. But perhaps the most surprising characteristic of all is that hearings decisions are made in front of everyone present and communicated to the child and family on the spot. Sandra has not been attending school regularly and there are concerns about her behaviour at home. Okay, I, uh, Sandra, I would agree with um, um, Pat and Teja about making the subject a supervision requirement because I think it will offer you protection and guidance. Um, and the reasons I have are broadly similar to, similar to Teja's and, and Pat's, so I'll just go through them. The relationship between your mum is deteriorating and at times you're beyond her control. Um, you struggle, you've been struggling to work on a voluntary basis with Kirsty. Um, you've not been going to school and there are some concerns about the risks you might be putting yourself at in the community by being out overnight and staying out late, okay? And I think the supervision requirement will also aid in formalising the contact that you have with your dad, okay? Once the hearing has made its decision, it's the responsibility of the local authority to implement it. It's the social workers in each authority who generally undertake this task, and they play an important role in the children's hearing system. Over the first 25 years, the children's hearing system gained respect and credibility. Initially, children's hearings were concerned mainly with children who had committed offences. However, as incidents of reported child abuse increased, the number of care and protection referrals to hearings grew steadily. For instance, in 1976, only 5,000 children were referred to hearings on care and protection grounds, 
By the late 1990s, that figure had almost trebled, with an average of more than 14,000 children being referred each year. The Children's Scotland Act of 1995 was implemented on the 1st of April 1997. The Act established the key principles that are to be applied when decisions are made about children and young people. The welfare of the child is to be paramount. The child's views should be sought and be taken into account. No court or children's hearing is to make an order or supervision requirement unless it's better for the child than no order at all. Before they can sit on hearings, panel members must satisfactorily complete pre-service training. The core material is the same throughout Scotland and is delivered locally by a children's panel training organiser. It comprises group discussions, inputs from specialist speakers, observation of hearings, visits to children's resource centres and individual study. Panel training is hard work but can also be enjoyable. Trainees learn from the knowledge and experience which each brings to the group. Training is a bit like doing a jigsaw, learning how pieces of information fit together. There's information on the history and principles of the system, the child, family and society, the law and procedure relating to children's hearings, communication, and in the roles of people in the system and resources for children and young people. Training doesn't stop once panel members begin to serve. Further training is provided to equip members with the skills and knowledge to chair hearings. Panel members are expected to be committed to ongoing training throughout their service. This allows members to review their practice and keeps them in touch with changes in legislation, practice and new resources for children. Every local authority in Scotland has its own children's panel. Panel members are appointed by Scottish Ministers on the recommendations of a local children's panel advisory committee, normally called the CPAC. Members of CPACs will recruit panel members, they will place advertisements in the press, they will then provide information to those people who are interested in the children's hearing system and conduct selection procedures so that suitable people are recommended for appointment. Reporters are employed by the Scottish Children's Reporter Administration, or SCRA as it's known. This is a non-departmental public body. It's responsible to Scottish ministers for the administration of Scotland's system of justice and care for children and young people. All children who are referred to the reporter, uh, we have the responsibility to investigate their circumstances and their background. And there are various ways that we do this. We can ask for school reports, and social work reports uh, about the child's background, uh, an educational psychologist report. In fact, anybody who has information about the child that can help us make an informed decision as to what is in that child's best interests. What are the main responsibilities of the social worker in children's hearings? Well, prior to the hearing, we have the responsibility to compile the report to give the panel members as much information as we can. Um, that will involve meeting with the family, meeting with the child, recording their views, um, consulting with other agencies as to the well-being of the child and as to the options for, for future planning. Um, it's our responsibility to make a recommendation to the children's hearing. Um, and if we're at the stage of, of recommending that a case be brought before a children's hearing, then, then it's, it would be fair to say that we will probably be recommending a home supervision requirement on the basis that we would have done all we could to work voluntarily with the family before actually taking the step of referring for a, a home supervision requirement. Perhaps the most surprising characteristic of all is that hearings decisions are made in front of everyone present and communicated to the child and family on the spot. A supervision requirement may require a child to live in a specified place or comply with any condition in the requirement. In most cases, children will continue to live at home. The programme of supervision is linked to the statement of reasons for the hearing's decision. A supervision requirement may specify where the child should live. This could be with one parent rather than another, with another relative, with a foster carer, or in a residential establishment such as a children's home, a residential school, 
or in certain circumstances in order to protect the young person or the public in secure accommodation. Wherever possible, it's the intention that the child or young person will remain in or return to the family home. If you would like to know more or wish to volunteer to serve the children of Scotland, you can write direct to the clerk of the CPAC for your local authority.